Hello. So in this video, we're going to look at what is the probability of needing to insert a USB three times. So what do I mean by this? So we've all had the situation, we have a USB stick, and you go to insert it into a USB port. And as you do, quite often you get the wrong way around, you have to flip it around. Okay. Sometimes you'll pick up the USB stick, let's put it in, and it'll go in first time. However, I'm sure many of you have noticed that sometimes the following situation happens. Take your device and USB stick, you go to try and plug it in, flip it around, and you realise it doesn't go in again. Flip it around one last time, and it goes in, giving the illusion that it requires three attempts to put the USB in. Another way of saying is that the USB is actually three-sided. It has three orientations, which, just looking at the inside of USB, you wouldn't think so. And so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to insert a USB over and over again into a slot, and I'm going to calculate what's the probability that the USB is actually three-sided, or more correctly, what's the probability that it takes three attempts to put the USB in. And so how am I going to do this? I'm going to start off with the USB drive. You can see that the particular USB drive I have is symmetric. So both sides are the same, with the only difference being the little mark on the male part, which has a line down the middle. So that's the reason I chose this USB stick, it's symmetrical. I'm then going to drop the USB stick many, many times over, and then pick it up and insert it. And then for the insertion, once dropped, the USB is picked up, and then placing it sideways, I then try to insert it into a USB port. The reason I do it sideways is because you could argue that if I could see the top or bottom of the male part, then I would know whether the orientation is correct. So if I keep it to the side, I don't actually know. And you see three examples here. First one, where we get it in the first try. Another example where it takes two attempts. And then a final example where it takes three attempts. So incorrect to getting it in the first time, swapping it over to the wrong orientation and swapping it once more into the correct orientation. The first thing I thought I should do was to do some drop tests so to see how fair the USB drive is. So when the USB drive is simply dropped, which side does it land on more? Ideally, the USB should be fair, so that there's equal probability of landing on both sides. One interesting thing to note is that while doing this drop test, as you see, I managed to get a situation where it actually rolls onto its side. So it's almost like a three-sided coin problem, which shows a finite probability that a coin can land on its side. So what does this look like? Well, the first thing I did was I loaded in the data from the experiments into Python, into a Jupyter Notebook, and you see that I dropped the USB 150 times in total. I counted whether it landed on the bottom or the top, where the bottom is where the mark on the male part is visible, and the top is where it's not visible. And the results from that show something quite interesting. So for this 149 attempt, you can see that I got the following probabilities, 48.3% for the bottom and 51.7% for the top. But you'll notice that I've also included the standard deviation of these results. You've got to imagine I've only done this 149 times. If I were to repeat this over and over again and look at the results from each of these 149 drops, I would see some spread. So it's very unlikely that the same 149 attempts would result in the exact same distribution of tops versus bottoms. And so that's what the standard deviation represents. And you see it's actually quite broad. So even though you're just looking at the numbers of 48.3 and 51.7, you could naively say the USB's orientations are not equiprobable. When actually, in fact, within the standard deviation here, you can't make that distinction. So if you ran a t-test on these two values or an ANOVA, you would not be able to determine that these were statistically different. And that kind of makes sense. So if we go to the Wikipedia page, there is a Wikipedia page for checking whether a coin is fair and not delving too much into it, 
there's some nice little formulas that we can use. What you basically end up with is a beta distribution. And what the beta distribution tells you for this particular situation is that the probability of the coin being fair, which would be 50% along this bottom here, it's saying that actually we can only say with 99% confidence that the probability of getting a top, which is one minus the bottom, is between 41% and 62%, which is quite broad. So we can only say with 99% confidence that our coin is within these fair bounds. And that doesn't seem like a very tight bound for us to put on this. And just jumping back to the Wikipedia page, it actually gives you some examples here. So in order for us to say, okay, we want to know whether this USB is fair to within 1%, which would be this here, we would need to do at least 2,500 drops and measurements in order to be 68% confidence that it's fair to within 1%. That's already quite a lot of drops, and that doesn't make sense because I did this 149 times. 149 times 16 is 2,384, which is very close to 2,500. And the value I measured for the standard deviation, which is this 68% confidence interval, was around 4%. So 4 is 4 times bigger than 1. And when you square that, it's 16 times bigger, which is roughly what we get in comparing against the Wikipedia page. And that's because there is a square root dependence for the error on the number of trials. So say you want to be even more confident, say you want to be 99.9% .9 confident that the USB is fair, you would need to do 27,000 drops of the USB drive in order to check that. So that's becoming quickly impractical. I left that there. There's no point in doing more than 149 different attempts. Instead, what we can say is actually what we're interested in is the amount of times we need three attempts. So it's going to be when you are trying to insert the USB in the correct orientation, but fail. You then switch to the incorrect orientation, which will always fail, and then switch back to the correct orientation, which has a much higher chance of going in. So the probability of having to do five insertions is incredibly low. And that's not something I considered in this because I didn't measure it within the number of attempts I did do. Likewise, if we said we insert the USB in the correct, in the incorrect orientation and fail to get it in. So it's the same situation for the correct orientation where we fail. It doesn't matter because those two events are indistinguishable. It doesn't matter if you inserted a USB the wrong way incorrectly, you will never be able to get it in normally. And so I went straight into measuring the number of tries required to insert USB. So I did this 500 times. And what we can see is that we get a nice distribution of requiring one attempt, a nice distribution of requiring two attempts, and occasionally we do need three attempts to insert the USB. And this is what we get. So we have here the number of tries required to get the USB in versus the probability. We see that. What I measured during my 500 attempts was 46.4% probability of getting it in the first time, 52.4% probability of getting it in the second time, and 1.2% probability of getting it in three with three tries. Now, this is quite interesting because these results basically suggest that I'm more likely to not get the USB in the first time than I am to get it in the first time which is kind of what I experience in life. I always find that I'm never able to get the USB in first try. And when you do, it's sort of like, yes, got it in first try. It's sort of like an achievement. And that would sort of come from the psychological aspect of, of the probability actually being lower for that to happen. So when it does happen, it's more surprising. So I thought that was very interesting. Histogram here is from a simulation. So the simulation says, let's assume that the value of probability I have measured is the mean. So that gives you a Poissonian distribution with a mean of 1.2%, which is 1.2% times n equals 500, which is you expect six events for the USB to require three attempts for every 500 uh, insertions of the USB. And what you find here is that we get our peak here at the 1.2%, which was our average. So remember that's six in 500. Which if I go back to the raw results, we measured six times within 500 attempts. But this also shows that if I was to do this experiment over and over again, or let's say a different YouTuber decides to do this experiment 500 times, so drop the USB 500 times, same USB 500 times into the same USB port using the same technique that I did. What's the value of probability that they would measure 
from their attempts. So you see we get this whole range of probabilistic distributions. So there is some finite chance that there's someone out there who will do this experiment and never see, never need three attempts to get the USB in. There's also some people out there that would do this experiment and would find a high number of attempts required. So something like 3% of their attempts required to get in. So 15 out of the 500. And so it follows this distribution, which is a Poissonian distribution. And now the question we really want to answer is how confident are we that the probability of needing three attempts is actually 1.2%? Or a better way of putting it, how confident are we that the probability of needing three attempts to insert the USB is at least 1.2%? So based on the measurement that we got, how confident are we in that measurement? And more importantly, how confident are we of certain probability bounds on that event? And so what we do here is we plot loads of different Poissonian distributions. So the Poisson distribution is a discrete distribution. So it only takes discrete values. So it's, and there's no continuous values between these points. But each one of these curves represents a different Poissonian distribution with a different percent. And here, the percent needs to be multiplied by the number n, which is the total number of trials, of 500. So this represents one event occurring every 500 tries. This represents two events occurring. This represents three events occurring, etc., etc., for every 500 tries. And when you plot them, you see something interesting. So this vertical line here is a probability that we measured from our data set. So that was the six in 500 attempts, either three tries to get the USB in. We can see here that if the actual probability was zero, which I haven't plotted on here, then there'd be no chance of needing three attempts to get the USB in. But that's not what we observe. The lowest probability that we can analyze using our results is 0.2% because this comes in chunks of one five hundredth. So one five hundredth is not 0.2%. So we have to go up in 0.2%. But if we look at the 0.2% here, we see there's high probability that we'd measure zero or one within those 500 attempts. Much lower probability that we'd measure 0.4%, much lower probability that we'd measure 0 0.6, 0 0.8, etc., etc. And so the measurement that we got of all of our trials to get the USB in being 1.2%, so the probability of that happening, if the actual probability was not 0.2%, is very low. Likewise, we can say what happens if the actual probability is 0.4%? And we can see here, the probability of us measuring 1.2% is still very low, but larger than it was for 0.4%. And then by the time we get here, the actual probability of three attempts being needed to insert the USB, we can see that we're now lying on the mean of that. So equally likely we need more or less than 1.2, with 1.2 being the mean. Likewise, if we said the probability of three attempts needed to insert the USB being 1.8%, it actually starts to become less likely that we'd measure 1.2%. This distribution keeps moving to the right, so it's very unlikely. And so anything significantly lower than anything significantly higher in terms of actual probability, it becomes increasingly lower that we would actually measure our 1.2% because we're basically on the tail end of these distributions. We're more likely to be close to the mean. And what we really need from this is we need a statement. What is the probability of needing three attempts to insert a USB, given that we measured a probability of 1.2%? So just because we measured a probability of 1.2% doesn't mean that it is. So there is always a possibility, when I've done this, inserted the USB 500 times, that I've measured some freak occurrence of nature in which I've over-measured or under-measured the actual probability. So I've been incredibly lucky or incredibly unlucky, depending on how you look at it. And so really what we want is a statement that says, given the data that we measured, so our 500 measurements, we are X percent confident that the probability of needing to insert the USB exactly three times is at least this percent. And after doing the math for that, we get a plot like this. So if the actual probability of needing three attempts is plotted on the X axis, then the probability of these 500 measurements, so someone else doing this measurement 500 times, the probability of that returning at least 1.2% is this blue line here. So we see that it becomes more and more probable that we would that we would get a high value of probability that the USB takes three attempts to insert if the actual probability is high itself. Whereas when you go to this side, which is the interesting side, if the actual probability of needing three attempts is very low, 
then the probability of us measuring our, at least our 1.2%, so it's our worst case, is very low too. So we can be very confident that we're probably not down here. So the actual probability is probably not very low and that we've just measured a freak occurrence of measuring a very high number for some reason. And then if we scroll down, we can see the inverse of that. So now on the bottom, we've got the actual probability of needing three attempts to insert the USB. And then here is our confidence, that's our result of 1.2% for these three attempts, comes from an actual probability of at least X. So we're now putting a lower bound on our probability. So I'm saying now, based on my results for these 500 USB insertions, that the probability is at least this, with this confidence. And then translating those actual numbers, we then get the following table. So we can say, I'm 99% confident that the probability of inserting US, of needing to insert a USB three times is at least 0.2%. I'm 99.55% confident that the probability needing to try to insert a USB three times is 0.4%. I'm 96.65% confident that the probability of attempting to insert USB three times is at least 0.6%. And then you can go down and down and down, and you can see we get less and less confident with our statements with the higher the probability. And typically in statistics, you take a confidence interval. You say, okay, what's the confidence interval of 99%? Where am I confident that 99% of my data lies? Well, the problem is with this discrete distribution, such as the Poisson, is that we don't get the in-between values. We need to do a lot more trials. So rather than doing N equals 500, so 500 USB insertions, we'd have to do something much bigger, so say 10,000, in order to get a resolution on the probability of 0.01%. And so these are our confidence levels. And so a typical statistical ones would be our 68% confidence level, your 95%, 99%, and things like three sigma, six sigma, etc. But as a good one, I like this one. So we're 99.9% .9 confident that the probability needing three attempts to insert a USB is at least 0.2%. So I'm 99.9% .9 confident that people out there inserting USB into a USB drive a thousand times, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 confident that they would probably measure, they would probably need three attempts at least once. So I think that's quite an in-depth discussion on this. I thought this was quite nice just to go just to go through the stats and to see and to see it. And also it sort of almost proves a point that USBs are three-sided because because it does seem to take three attempts to put one in. But what's actually happening is more likely you try to get it in the first time, you misalign it, and then you assume it's in the wrong way because there's no give, and then you turn it around to which you definitely won't be able to get it in before switching back again to try for a third time. And as I said, I didn't see any evidence of needing four attempts, but perhaps given a large enough number, let's say I did 10,000 tries, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. And then you can do the same analysis of four attempts. So you can see to what how confident you are in a statement of saying that you need this many attempts per this many tries with this particular confidence interval i hope you found this interesting that's where i'll stop there so just remember there's a non-zero probability that this little guy needs three attempts to put in